Well, I believe our next guest is here. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Go ahead and introduce yourself for me. I'm Fabian Battaglia, CEO of Mobix Labs based in uh, Irvine, California. Okay. And tell me about your company. Well, uh, Mobix Labs is a fabulous semiconductor company. We're focused in two primary areas. One is uh, wireless, and we develop uh, innovative solutions for 5G. And when I okay. say 5G, we, we focus on the millimeter wave uh, spec of 5G. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and we have uh, another division which uh, is involved in connectivity, um, which uh, we call AOCs, active optical cables. Okay. So, so for, for consumers, uh, the 5G millimeter uh, band is what like T-Mobile calls UC. Like if you see 5G UC show up on your phone, that's what we're talking about here, right? Yes, yes. And it's from a spec standpoint, it, it's the, the 24 to 44 gig space as opposed to uh, sub six gig, mm -hmm. which is most commonly used today uh, for 5G, which is really only incrementally better than what you have in 4G LTE. So right. in, uh, when um, the millimeter wave space uh, becomes uh, adopted, uh, the, the performance on it will be drastically better. Yeah, um, I actually, uh, I have from time to time, interestingly, not in the studio, but in mission control out there, um, I get UC out there, but not in here. And so I actually did a speed test comparison on the same device in the studio and then in mission control. And it is wildly different. Yes. Yeah. And then, but there are some challenges with it and that's why there's a lot of innovation going on right now. And sure. We're, we're, a, we're a big part of that. Um, there's, there's the, the physics uh, involved in transmitting and receiving signals at that speed, you know, become a challenge. Mm-hmm. Because um, the uh, millimeter wave signals, they, they don't travel through walls or right. or glass or foliage or weather, uh, not nearly as well as the 4G LTE signal does. So there's some challenges associated with that, but that becomes an opportunity for us. And we think that we've got a, a very innovative solution, uh, economical innovative solution uh, with some pretty cool features. Very cool. So let's let's talk about where where you fit into uh, that ecosystem. Okay, so we, we develop um, ICs that okay. uh, effectively what we do is we connect from the antenna all the way back to a baseband processor in, in a modem or a radio. And so the, the company was founded on our flagship device is what we call a beamformer. And a beamformer is the technology used for um, in 5G, specifically a millimeter wave, um, because of the challenges that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So we developed a, a, a front end or, or a beamformer device, and now we're also developing some circuitry, some chips that go around that. And then this, as we go down the signal path from the antenna all the way back, back to a baseband processor. Now, we don't provide the processor, but we provide everything else uh, within, within that uh, block diagram. Okay. And which side of the communication are you, do you specialize in, or do you do both sides? Um, well, what our our chips would go into? We're targeting the infrastructure market, okay? Right? So, and it's it's a full duplex receive transmit, and uh, our what we're targeting are the what our customers would be are those that would be developing uh, small cells or okay. repeaters or access points. That's that's our primary target. Now we would fit into other applications. Uh, we would fit into a cell phone, uh, but that's not our primary target, you know, today. Okay. Gotcha. So so you're on the not necessarily on the consumer side. You're not you're not trying to put here. Right. <laughs> you're right. you're focusing more on the on the towers and the repeaters and and or, yes, what hardware we call, like that. Yeah, what we call the infrastructure yeah. side. Although okay. now we, we've been exposed to some other interesting applications, and, and one in particular is automotive. Okay. Now, and so we're seeing more opportunities and, and more um, potential use cases for millimeter wave you know, in, in those markets. 
Okay. That's interesting. And, you know, it's always, I always love, and this happens a lot at CES and it's, you know, why so many of us are disappointed to not be on the show floor is the conversations that you have with, where you, I, I built this product and then you have a conversation at CES and you're like, oh, well, I, you could use that for this. And you're like, well, I would never, given a hundred years, I never would have come up with that. Yeah. Well, that's one of the cool things about, um, you know, 5G and specifically in the millimeter wave space. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there are use cases which um, we, some that we can't even think of right now. Um, so it, in getting into medical type applications and, as I mentioned, um, automotive autonomous vehicles and, and um you know, things like holographic applications. And, you know, you think about how, you know, we now, you know, even uh, with, with COVID, I mean, it's, it's made it even uh, as far as the bandwidth required to do the things that we do on a day-to-day basis. If you think about how we work, how we communicate, how we, how we educate, uh, you know, how we entertain ourselves, and you know that's it's only it's becoming you know bandwidth is, is going to become very very important for some of these advanced yeah. use cases and again as, as soon as we figure this out i think there's going to be other use cases that we can't even think of right now which are going to come you know become a reality yeah for sure um right before right before we started talking i was i was talking about how you know just a couple of years ago on the show floor the idea, there was not a dedicated like health tech space and now, you know, it's a huge portion of the show floor because once somebody said, well, we could do this with a fitness band. Oh, well, <laughs> everything changed. Now you got stuff built into the uniforms of professional athletes, right? right as soon as right. you start messing around with something, you come up with new ideas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, yeah, the 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 use cases again and, and, and what we're, we're going to enable going forward are very exciting. Yeah, it, it certainly sounds like it. Now, obviously, this doesn't, like you said, you're not you're not focusing even on the consumer product so much as the infrastructure right now. But we've got a wide audience. Uh, <laughs> if people want to find out more about uh, the things that that your company are up to or engage you possibly in a cellular cellular repeater product or something, how can they do that? Well, they can contact us. We have our, our website, uh, mobixlabs.com. Um, we have um, our, our sales group is, is uh, you know, we have a pretty far reach. Uh, we're, we are global, uh, but mobixlabs.com is, is the best way to, to understand and, and become familiar with what we uh, are offering and what we're working on. And we're relatively new. We've, uh, Mobix Lab has been in existence for about a year and a half. Okay. Although the foundational technology that that it's based on started in, in 2017. And the idea then was to build a portfolio of IP. Okay. And, and patent the, the, that uh, IP. So we had a, a group of really, really um, smart guys that had um, architected um, this, uh, this technology. And the idea at that point was to pos- position it to even be acquired. And in, in about a year, a year and a half ago, we decided that the technology was so strong that we wanted to productize it. And that's when we formed Mobix Labs. And so we, sure. we took that portfolio of IP and we uh, turned it into a chip. Very cool. Well, I got to tell you, I'm watching our chat right now and I can see that there are people having conversations about implementations of this you've got you've got the audience really excited right and that's what it's it's really going to take you know, the the interesting approach that we've taken at mobix labs is you know today the technology and our engineers not just at mobix labs but as a global community the engineering community has gotten so good uh, but the challenge becomes mm-hmm. with technology this advance is making it economical and what, what we've done and, and what our team is really good at is taking kind of a theory to practice uh, approach and coming up with solutions which are economical, right? Because, okay. you know, if you can't make it economical, it's not going to become pervasive. It, it really doesn't benefit anybody, right? If you can't produce it in high volume at, at a sure. price point where everybody can use it. So we feel like we're contributing to that in, in making millimeter wave a, a reality. 
so that we can enable all these cool uh, applications. And we're making great progress, you know, to that end. Very cool. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming on and talking about this. I know sometimes people panic and they're like, well, I, I don't really target the consumers directly with my thing. And I'll tell you, based on the, what's happening in the chat room, that's not a concern here. So I appreciate you coming on and talking. Yeah, I'm happy, happy to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, have have a good rest of the event. Are, are you, you're, we're, we're at the show. Yeah, okay, we're, you are. Yeah, we're at the show. And interestingly enough, um, unfortunately, we've had, you know, some, some of our customers decided not to attend. Uh, uh -huh. We've had some meetings virtually. Uh, but actually, we've got a very packed schedule. And uh, we had a great, great meetings uh, uh, today. So far, we have some more this afternoon and, and more tomorrow. So it's, um, it's unfortunate, you know, it's, uh, but you know, we got to give this COVID thing a, a good punch in the nose and get it behind us. Agreed. And, and no, their technology has nothing to do with it. Conspiracy theorists. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time well, to, thank uh, you. to come on and talk about it. Cool technology. And I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're focusing on it. Great. Thanks. Have a good rest of the show. All right. Same. Bye-bye. TPN CES 2022 coverage is executive produced by Michelle Mendez. Technical directors are Kurt Corliss and Adam Barker. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz and Maurice McCoy. Interviews are edited by Joe Minnie. Hosts are Marlo Anderson, Todd Cochran, Scott Ertz, Christopher Jordan, Danielle Mendez, and Alante Sparks. Las Vegas studio provided by HC Productions. Remote studio provided by Plug Hits Productions. This has been a Tech Podcast Network production. Copyright 2022.